Well, the wind is blustering across the Silverstone circuit as we get ready to send the cars out for the Adrian Flux Trophy for Transatlantic Pre-66 Touring Cars. And uh, yeah, a little bit of nervous laughter perhaps from some of our drivers, particularly the ones with the big horsepower, the Ford Falcons, the Ford Mustangs, and then the smaller 1600cc Lotus Cortinas, the Hearts in their uh, 1600cc Alpha GTA. Are they going to come to the fore? Less horsepower, nimble handling. Oh, it's been a, a recipe for success in the British Saloon Car Championship in the 60s. It wasn't always the big brutes that won it. And there are a lot of Cortinas, mind you, in the weight of numbers. The Mustangs, the Galaxies, the Falcons are pretty much their equal. And then if the rain does return, hello, look for the little minis because with that front wheel drive, extra lightweight, they could well be charging up the order. Certainly mini expert Ian Curley will be praying for rain right now and he may not be the only one. So we have an absolutely monumental grid of not 40, not 50, but 60 pre-66 touring cars champing at the bit to get out on the circuit. And as we saw, it has been drying. There is a little bit of light sky overhead. That just rather depends in which direction you look as to whether you think, oh, it's getting nicer or oh, it's not direction from which the weather normally comes it looks relatively clear though as we send our cars out for this race now this again will be a 45 minute race with a mandatory pit stop you don't have to have a second driver but you do have to stop some of our top drivers will have a longer mandatory pit stop than the rest of the field but the minimum stationary requirement is 60 seconds plus the speed limit in the pits is 60 kilometers an hour so add to that you will take around 100 seconds for a pit stop Sam Tordoff leads the race on his own and actually he'll be the man who is stationary longest because not only is he a double plus driver but he is also running on his own. John Spears and Nigel Greensill on the outside of the front row of the grid. Yes, John Spears and Nigel Greensill again. Michael Whitaker, the first of the Mustangs, uh, second of the Mustangs and uh, James Thorpe will start st sh share the car that he shares, start the car that he shares with Phil Quaife. It's been a long day, hasn't it? So Alex Brundle is starting, so Chris Hoy will wait to take over. And as he said, hasn't driven this car in the rain. Now, it's not actually raining, but it is greasy enough. And when you've got 1960s suspension, inverted commas, technology, close inverted commas, and uh, plenty of horsepower from your big five litre Ford V8, then it is going to be a challenge. It is relatively dry though, Alistair, and for the bigger cars, it's looking more comfortable or less uncomfortable perhaps than it did half an hour ago. The, the, the second part was correct, less uncomfortable, that's right. I think what we're going to see in this race is a lot of sideways action on uh, opposite lock from all of the cars, even the minis, although they tend to understeer and then uh, slide their way around as long as you keep the wheels pointing in the direction you want to go. But the rear wheel drive cars, the Cortinas, the Mustangs, the Falcons, lots of sideways, great stuff. And a, a galaxy in the field as well. We can mm. see that vast car that's got its own postcode, uh, <laughs> the red car with the white stripes. And we've got the Mercury Comet Cyclone further back on the right-hand side, the uh, bigger of those two blue cars alongside the Falcon Sprint. And these are all uh, subcompacts and compacts, US style. The rule for the minis, particularly if it's wet, do not lift. It'll either sort itself out or it won't, but lifting off is not going to help you. So keep your foot planted. That will be rule one. And Ian Curley, uh, one of our mini experts, has raced in the Mini 7s and Mini Miglias for decades. He knows this track. He knows how to get the best out of the cars. And the smaller engine drivers will definitely be praying for a shower. Trophy for Transatlantic Pre-66 Touring Cars. It's 
like the start of a NASCAR race with a thundering V8 rumble up front. Sam Tordoff in the puce and gold behemoth leads the field into the first corner. The Ford Falcon is there and there are Fords just about everywhere. Falcon, Sprints, Galaxies, Mustangs and Cortinas. Pick a favourite, colour will do. It's as good as any other way of judging who's going to be quick here. Contact and a half spin. That is from Alex Brundle. No, no, Alex. That will be the left front brake that he assembled that wasn't working properly there, I imagine. That's the pale blue. The first of two pale blue Mustangs are very sideways. Uh, Alan Mann Mustang on the grass on the exit onto the Wellington Strait. And the Minis already started to try and carve their way through the bigger cars as we have our first change of the lead. And coming down into Brooklands, it's Sam Tordoff on the outside, and he's going to go all the way around, I think, alongside the uh, the Mustang on the uh, which now becomes the outside, of course, because that's the way the track runs. The 179 car, Nigel Greensall, it is once yep. again our, our old friend, uh, and uh, then next up is the yellow car, is that Andy Prio, I think. In I think it is. Yes, Prio it is. Started that one. Yeah, you can see the yellow flag, uh, the yellow colours of the Guernsey flag, and he's leaning. Oh, <laughs> there's a, a big moment there. Oh, or, or something for Sam Tord. I've got a big wriggle on as he came up through the gears. It is Nigel Greensill in second place in the blue Mustang. Andy Prio in third in the yellow Mustang. And Prio looking to take the lead of this race. Now, as a former hill climber, he likes to get on with stuff. And I think he feels that right now Nigel Greensill is in the way and he wants to get to grips with Sam Tordoff. So it's Tordoff who slithers his way around in the Falcon, the two similar engine cars behind the two Mustangs and uh, Nigel Greensall. You can see the smile on his face, can't you, as he goes sideways through the middle element of Beckett's. Uh, is that flashing lights from Andy Prio behind? He's oh, definitely. Very and that's Alex that. Brundle in fourth place as well. So Brundle has broken away from the group behind, led by Mike Whitaker. Uh, it is Alex Brundle in fourth place. In fact, it's uh, Phil... Um, yeah, Phil Quaife, who's leading the next group from Mike Whitaker, the Hearts, and Richard Dunn. Richard Dunn, the lead Cortina, the white car with the red highlights, car number 147. Fantastic start to the race for Richard Dunn, who will be missing his old sparring partner, Neil Brown, the man uh, who he inspired to get back into racing. And here's the battle for second. Green saw the blue car with the opposite lock. Prio, a little neater and tidier, using more of the road. And here comes Chris Hoy and everybody else stepping up onto the pit wall to see them coming steaming by. And so Chris Hoy's teammate and uh, the car's owner, Alex Brundle, is in fourth place in the Brustang. Through the left-hander at uh, the at uh, Abbey and Farm into the tight right at Village, and it's still the uh, the, the Falcon of Sam Tordoff who leads, but the three Mustangs behind, and the one that's closing in is Alex Brundle after that rather tricky start where he got a bit uh, caught up in some traffic, but he's now closing in on the three cars ahead. So it's a four-car battle for the lead, all with the 4.7-litre Ford V8 power under the bonnet and look at the yeah, Alfa Romeo the as well. The, uh, yeah, that is the Hart, David and Olivier Hart, who started that was David Hart, I think it was, in the 1600 uh, Alfa Romeo coming off the turn, trying to get by uh, Phil Quaife in the Mustang, but Mark Whit uh, Mike Whitaker has come back past him, Steve Soper is right in there as well, he started the number seven Mustang that he shares with Henry Mann, and Steve was telling us yesterday, or on Friday maybe it was, after qualifying, it's a brand new car that they built because they thought they could make a better car than the red and gold Alaman racing car that they flogged and they found out that they haven't. He said he's got all the right bits, the engine's better, everything's better, it just won't do what it's supposed to do the way that it's supposed to and Richard Dutton is right in there with the hearts so the the Alpha and the first the red and white or white and red Cortina in there firmly in the second group of cars but the lead quartet has broken into two it is Tordoff being chased by Greensill and Prio being harassled, ha harassled, is that a word, by Brundle. And uh, Andy Prio got a bit of a slide on there and I think that's why the gap opened up a little bit because uh, he went out onto those wet, slippery curves and done it again there, gone quite wide, although that curve not 
splashing up as the other one did. And uh, coming up alongside is Alex Brundle. So Alex Brundle, yes, he goes through, passes Andy Prio down into Stowe Corner. So it's still Mustang, 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 second, third and fourth. But now it's the Brundle car that's third and the Prio car that is fourth. And then behind them, we should see in the back of our live stream shot, is the next of the Mustangs. In fact, uh, there's three of them in a line yeah. before we get Richard Dutton in the court. So team. that's Soper in the blue car. So he shuffled his way to the front of that queue. And then, you, yeah, Richard Dutton is at the back of that group in the Lotus Cortina. Soper runs out very well. And that's exactly what he meant about it. has got all the right bits. It should do all the right stuff, and it won't do what it's supposed to do. That's exactly as he summed it up. And there you can see he falls into the clutches of the Thorpe and Quave cart. And Richard Dutton now got ahead of the Alpha in the Lotus Cortina. What the small cars need is rain now. Dutton drifts out wide. David Hart wider yet in that red Alpha GTA and slipping up the inside of, it was Phil Quaithe, it wasn't, it was John, uh, James, uh, yeah, John, James Thorpe that started the car. So in fact, it's James Thorpe that has started the 67 car. This red, my starting driver's lineup. David Hart goes past Richard Dutton on the inside. The Alpha and the Cortina giving away about three litres in terms of capacity to all the cars around them, but nothing in terms of speed. As they come down the Wellington Strait once again into the left-hander at Brooklands and Richard Dutton moving left and right. Uh, somebody uh, that it's the uh, Quaif, no, sorry, you said it's James Thorpe started that one. Yeah. James Thorpe trying up the inside, but I think the Mustang much, much heavier. Oh, and trouble! A, a spin for the number 70. Yeah, that's Cortina. Justin Law's Lotus Cortina. So this uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth battle rages. First and second together, third and fourth. Brundle can't get away from the yellow and black car of Prio. And then the next little group. And at uh, the back of that group, after a, a being shoved out very, very wide on the first lap at Abbey, is the 192 car that started by Julian Thomas, a former winner of this race uh, in previous years here at Silverstone. But Julian Thomas will hand over to Callum Lockie as usual. But uh, he got pushed out very, very wide, and I spotted him at the back of the group. So look out for 192. Where is it now? 12th at the moment. Yeah, he's just a little off that group, and there's another the Galaxy right behind him as well. In fact, that's car number 57, and that is the Mike Gardner Phil Keane car. So that's leading the next little group. But uh, yeah, Julian is closing in on the Mustang in front, and that is another ex Allen Man racing car. And then we've got Lotus Cortina on Lotus Cortina action now. They're all green and white, so we have to wait till they get alongside. That's Henry Neal who shares with Gordon Shedden, and behind him, dialing in the opposite log, is Andy Wolf who shares with Ben Tinkler, that's car 113, so uh, it would normally be Matt Neal and Gordon Shedden in this Lotus Cortina, but Henry Neal is driving it, and the late Steve Neal, Matt's dad, Henry's granddad, Matt told us yesterday, is on board the car, at least his ashes are. Steve Neal started his career alongside John Whitmore racing minis in the early 60s, then set up his own racing team, Team Dynamics, as it became in British Touring Cars, uh, guided Matt throughout his career. Matt's been trying for years to get Steve Neal to come and do historic racing as the Galaxy comes through. Great move by Julian there, and a spinning Mustang in front. He picks up two in one corner. Steve Neal wouldn't go back racing, so Matt has got his ashes in that car, and Henry on the inside, going down the inside, trying to make the move. The Galaxy's lost a, a fender, uh, so that is the number 10 car, or maybe the number nine and three quarters car of Tom Sharp. It's lost that right front fender. And through goes Henry Neal. It is busy stuff, isn't it? It certainly is, yes. The uh, the Falcon there. I think they have plastic uh, wings, don't they, on the front of the Falcons? They were sort of like. Not wings. originally. <laughs> yes, but, but for racing. And uh, the battle continues. Richard Dutton at the back there, just uh, flinging the car through the Mark uh, 1 Cortina, that is, Cortina Lotus, with a 1600 twin cam engine designed uh, and uh, developed by Lotus. For Ford and uh, on power uh, yeah. through goes the Steve Sofa. Sofa and car, look at the way it locks the up in, as well. Back through on the inside goes yeah. David Hart in the nimble little Alfa Romeo. Very, very pretty car. Well, Steve Sofa's built a couple of Mark 1 Lotus Cortinas for himself to race and has sold 
them on. And then uh, in the Mustang with uh, Henry Mann, the son of Alan Mann, who ran the cars in period, Cortinas and Mustangs. And that's Corson Dutton in a big avoidance moment of Steve So beginning sideways. Select first gear, carry on. And in fact, Richard Dutton's Cortina has the name of Neil Brown on the door as well. And I think Dutton is fishing for years, and maybe that's what the big moment was, where maybe he went for a gear that was not there. He's got a box full of neutrals, hasn't he? That's a real shame for Richard Dutton, the former boss of the Fortec Motorsport team. Now, here he goes. He's found one. If he's got more than one, that's good. David Hart is now head of Steve Soper once more, up into the top half dozen. Here's your race leader, Sam Tordoff, with Nigel Greensall starting the car behind him. And then Alex Brundle, the pale blue Mustang on his own, in third place, ahead of Andy Prio. And the gap first to third is about seven seconds. Olivier Hart, da uh, David Hart rather, up to sixth position now. So let's take a look at Greensill. Greensill's last lap, two minutes 30.1. Tordoff, two minutes 29.9. Fastest race lap of anybody. So Greensill in that unfamiliar bright blue car number 179 still giving chase but just dropping back a fraction there is julian thomas in the 192 he's just passed steve yes, Soper, he hasn't has. he? yeah so he is really making good progress julian i think that will put him up to seventh place yeah so uh, good effort from julian thomas and we know that julian is a very very quick driver these days with uh, excellent coaching from callum Lockie and callum himself a very quick driver so that's a very strong pairing and it's not like Julian doesn't get much track time either. They're in almost every race that doesn't include... Well, they're, I think they're in every race that doesn't include single-seaters. So this is uh, a recovering Mustang. There's a bunch of Mustangs. Here comes the Falcon as well down the straight. Look, we come at Cyclone. It's being uh, almost invisible. It's normally quite a quick car. Looks like they're having a little bit of an issue with it. This is, again, a massive battle of Mustangs and Cortinas and the behemoth that is the Galaxy. The Galaxy really changed the face of saloon car racing in the UK. May 1963, Jack Sears uh, was uh, given a Galaxy to race in the touring car, or saloon car championship, it was called then. And here at Silverstone in May, he uh, blew away the Jaguars for the first time in uh, quite, a quite a long time. And uh, a car trying to be restarted there is the Streaks family car, father and son, Ollie and Mel Streak. But uh, that flame out of the exhaust is not a major issue in that he's trying to get the car started and it's flooded, basically. There's yeah. too much fuel uh, going down and it's coming out of the exhaust. Yeah, that, uh, that Galaxy being driven by Gregor Fiskin and Sam Hancock. It's Fiskin at the wheel at the moment, the Scottish car dealer. Gregor is a, an arch enthusiast, has raced in period in the British touring cars over the last few years, uh, British GT rather, over the last few years, and really enjoys dealing in and racing historic cars. Down the inside and squeezing through goes 263, the McInerney family Mustang. Michael and Sean racing that grey car, and just in front is the Mustang of Dave Coyne and Mark Wright, car number four. The, uh, the white car with the red and blue stripes. Oh, and, uh, uh, yeah. oh and that's the Streaks car. So, yeah. so the reason he was trying to get the engine going was he just uh, recovered, or not recovered, uh, as the case may be, from a spin and obviously fairly heavy contact with another vehicle or maybe the barrier. Left front puncture and possibly collapsed suspension as well. So that car will hopefully make it round to the pits without causing any issues for anybody. Fastest race lap now for Nigel Greensill in second place. 229.46 compared to the last lap, 229.54 of Sam Tordoff. So, Tordoff, so nothing between them as this battle rages behind the green. At the red and gold, 63 John Davison. That's a, an Allen Man racing liveried car. Hale Green, 77, Robin Ward and Nick Chester, Ford Falcon, making its way through there. And he's definitely drying out because the bigger, heavier cars with more power are still keeping progress up the field. This is the battle for third, Brundle, Prio, Whitaker. So Brundle in the pale blue car, Prio in the yellow, the meat in the sandwich, and Mike Whitaker behind, car number 49, the white car. And he's the man who's closed in on this battle. 
indeed, yes, Mike Whitaker uh, has uh, closed up onto the yellow car ahead. Brundle, we saw, uh, right up with the leaders. He seems to have lost a little bit of ground over the last few laps. But uh, the Andy Prio car, the yellow car with the black stripes, now being challenged by Mike Whitaker. And uh, Mike Whitaker is driving solo in car number 49. And down into Stowe Corner they come. And uh, Batman ahead of them in a, uh, a Mark 1 Lotus Cortina. And they make their way round the three Mustangs. Mike Whitaker in a right-hand drive car, whereas Brundle and Prio are both left-hand drive. Not sure quite how that works around the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. But uh, maybe the right-hand drive car being on the inside for more corners just is a little easier to place. It seems to be a little less tail-happy as well. Of course, he's going to make a liar of me now and have an enormous opposite lock slide. But he's looking to come and make it three wide. Prio's trying to get by Brundle, but Whitaker gets by Prio instead. So he moves up to fourth place. And of course, now he's not in the favourable position of seeing what the cars in front do and being able to attack either or both of them. He's now got to worry about Andy Prio behind. So he'll be feeling a bit of the pressure that Alex Brundle has had. Pete Window is open and Nigel Greensill is in to hand over to John Spears. Sam Tordoff is in to hand over to Sam Tordoff. The British touring car ace stays in. I think Greensill carried on. Oh, he did indeed, uh, I beg yes, your pardon, yes he did. On. So it's only Tordoff that's come in, but he is uh, solo, so it doesn't really matter when he comes in. Well, it does, because the longer he is, he's, he's going to be in the pits the longest, but he wants to come out when there are fewer cars on track, so there are fewer cars to hold him up as he tries to recover. So if he gets in right at the very beginning of the pit window, then other cars will continually be peeling off into the pit lane, and the hope is, fingers crossed, they might then hinder him less as he tries to True. undo that extra stationary time, and it will feel like forever. I want I wonder what the brakes of that car are going to be like having sat and stewed for another two minutes waiting for him to go. Alex Brundle weaves his way past the Mini, followed by Mike Whitaker and Andy Prio. 1-2-2 two, two there, the uh, pale blue Austin Cooper S. And that is the Jesty and Williamson car. It's one of the late additions. There's lots of minis in the race, but if they were hoping for success in the rain, I'm afraid the weather gods have not helped them. Uh, the version of a topless car is uh, being passed as well, and out comes the race leader, Sam Tordoff. So he is more than a lap behind now, and he had to stop longer than anybody else, so his stationary time now needs... What's he got? 27, 28 minutes to try and make up that time at lost. 82 and a half seconds he was uh, stationary in the pits and the shortest pit stop time, 60 seconds, so an extra 22 and a half. And uh, in the background is Julian Thomas, so he is gradually moving up on the Andy Prio and uh, Alex Brundle Mustangs just ahead of him. And he's currently running in be fourth place or fifth, fifth place yeah, for fifth place. Uh, Julian Thomas. So actually we need to uh, keep eyes on roughly where Sam Tordoff is. Uh, he is currently coming out onto the Woodcut Strait, so he's going to come thundering past us. He does so now, halfway round the lap. And uh, there, uh, Nigel Greensall is the race leader. Alex Brundle under pressure again from Andy Prio. Prio trying to go the long way around the outside. Brundle's bottled up behind a Mini. The Mini doesn't know where to go. The Lotus Cortina is going by the Mini. And Brundle, is he going to get the best of this? He slightly does as Prio's nose is almost cut off. The Triple Eight Mini, Dan Wheeler, was the first of our reserves. Dan has raced in Mini Sevens for a number of years, now has that historic Mini, and uh, he comes through. Look who's appeared on the scene. Julian yes. Thomas. Julian Thomas Julian works gets, by both of them as well. Gets by Andy Prio, and in all that uh, mix-up up at uh, the loop and Aintree, he's just worked his way through and come through now ahead of Andy Prio and behind Alex Brundle. He is properly pitching that car around, isn't he? He's having a lovely time. So Christopher Hoy uh, is ready to go, and Julian Thomas sliding around all over the place. Ian Curley in the pits, one of our mini leaders. And 
Dan Wheeler, the boss of Dread, the motorsport clothing company, really enjoys racing his minis. And just saw him in the background being passed by all this, not being swamped by these guys. And the Brustang goes by. Slightly less favourable for Julian Thomas. He has to wait to go around the outside of the Cortina. And he's still he's waiting. not waiting for anybody, is he? He's just pushing on. He's got... Uh, Andy Prio behind him. I mean, you know, when you're a, a, an owner driver like Julian Thomas and you're racing people like Alex Brundle, who's got lots of, you know, top international racing experience, a multiple world champion like like Andy Prio, you must just pinch yourself when you're racing wheel to wheel with them. And then when you get a chance to put in a move and go by them, you think, wow, what a what a place to be. Coming through as well, Steve Soper again, you know. What a racing CV Superman has got, and Julian Thomas is in there mixing it with all of them. Soap has come by and mugged both of them as they argued the toss. He went straight by, didn't he? And looks like he's just got a little bit more feel for the car than he had before. And there is our, what is now, I think, still our lead Cortina. Or is that a lapped car? Is that, is that, that's Henry Neal, is it? Their car is white with a, a gold stripe. I think that might be a lapped car, actually. It is a little further back. Henry so, Neal in 10th place. So Julian Thomas uh, up one and down one again. So uh, the leader, Nigel Greensall, remains out at the moment. Fastest lap of the race to Nigel as well. He'll hand over to car owner John Spears. But, he's uh, getting he... caught in traffic as well, isn't he? Here comes Prio. squeezes through. Julian Thomas uh, back to the back of that group again. So uh, for about half a lap, he was second in this group. He's now at the back of it again. So it's just uh, nip and tuck all the way. He goes for a slightly tighter line, but uh, there's no room to get through there into Brooklands. Now they'll turn right to Luffield. And uh, will he have a go on the exit of Luffield through Woodcut, perhaps get a slightly better run through this section of the track and then challenge at the other end of the straight down at Cops Corner. But Andy Prio's got ideas about going past Alex Brundle, hasn't he, as well, as they come out onto the old pit straight. And uh, Prio goes to the inside, but he's not alongside, so he stays in behind Alex Brundle as they go through Cops Corner. Now it's up the rise to Maggots. And all the time these two are battling, Steve Soper, Soperman, it gets ahead and has opened out a gap now. Through goes uh, Brundle through Maggots. Andy Prio takes a slightly tighter line through. Beckett's comes up alongside. Can he get through? No, it's a long way around on the outside there. Winds on the opposite lock, uh, but cannot find a way past Alex Brundle. And Julian Thomas is back on the scene again. Yeah. Hello. And Julian Thomas in a much larger car, but with the same capacity engine, so slightly longer wheelbase. Uh, it maybe doesn't wag the tail quite as much, but it's definitely not you know, seen, it wouldn't have been seen as a performance car like the Mustang is. Finally, Andy Prio dies up the inside. Now, does that mean that Brundle was letting him go because he's due to go into the pit lane? I think it does, it does. He's got the indicator on. Now, whether he's done that on purpose or not, I don't know. In he comes. That's why he let Prio go through. He didn't want Prio on the inside because he knew he wanted to come in. Meanwhile, the race leader stays out. Nigel Greensall in traffic. He's not making a lot of ground up. And Andy Prio, there is Nigel Greensill. Now, that is uh, 52, that is Henry Neal. So Greensill has now lapped up to ninth place. Now, don't forget that maybe half a dozen cars that would have been in the top 10 uh, are into the pits or have been in the pits, including the early race leader, Sam Tordoff. Alex Brundle out of his own Mustang, and Chris Hoy is in. Nigel Greensill remains out front, and he's circulating as quick as anybody else. In fact, quicker than anybody else on track at the moment. 2 minute 30.8. The next closest cars are 31s, 32s, 34s. So Greensill is absolutely flying at the moment. Steve Soper is second on the road. Prio is third. And these guys, uh, Brundle and Hoy, Julian Thomas came in right behind Alex Bundle, didn't he? So he'll be handing on to Callum Lockie. Oops, starting it in gear. That's because it hasn't got a quadrant gear selector and, and an indicator. You cannot beat a V8. I know 
V10s and V12s and everything else, but you just cannot be at a V8. Andy Prio ahead of Steve Soper. Now, these two, uh, both BMW stalwarts over the years, long careers racing touring cars for BMW and endurance cars in the, in the case of uh, Andy Prio as well. And then latterly, a Ford factory driver. And indeed, so too was Steve Soper. And out comes Julian Thomas, right, uh, uh, Callum Lockie rather, right behind Sir Chris Hoy. So these cars came in nose to tail, they go out nose to tail. That would suggest they both did the same uh, pit stop time and uh, straight away Callum Lockie not want to hang about. He wants to get through and he has. He had a little village. Lockie up down the inside there, didn't he? And he's gone through ahead of Sir Chris Hoy into the loop and now Aintree and onto the Wellington Strait. So that's a... Uh, one place up for the Lockheed car ahead of the Hoy car as they go down towards Brooklands. Just behind them you saw Mark Burnett's car number, car number five, here's Austin Mini Cooper S, he is leading his class. There are about 17 different classes for the 60 cars, so, um, but uh, yeah, Mark Burnett leading his class and again, here comes the Mustang battle. Sopa having a look at Prio. Now, they are getting close to where they really need to be in this lap or the next at the very latest. And Andy Prio will be handing over to Alex Taylor and... Uh, Green Salim, leader in the pit lane. Steve... Go ahead. Steve Soper handing over to Henry Mann. Yes, that's right. So, ooh, a little bit of gaffer tape from that uh, little biff that Alex Prundle had earlier on. The team had time to do that. Nigel Greensill runs back round to have a quick word with John Spears. The stopwatch there is what it's all about. It's not how quickly you can do the pit lay, uh, the uh, driver change in the pit lane. You have to do it and have to remain stationary for the requisite minimum time. And I'll put my hat on uh, Callum Lockie and Julian Thomas to win this. Just a thought. I know we're uh, 18 minutes from the end of the race, so I'm slight advantage on talking about it at the beginning of the race, but I still think that car could come through to win. All right, well, here is Steve Soper, still chasing Andy Prio. This is the lead battle now, because don't forget the Greensall and Spears car has stopped and is in the pit. Mike Whitaker stopped as well. A lock up yes. there from Prio again. In fact, Whitaker is ahead of Brundle and Hoy and mm. Thomas and Lockie on uh, the post pit stop strategy. So it's only these two that have yet to stop, and Superman can't gather it all up correctly, has to take the shortcut through. He's going to let Prio go through. Look, a long look over his shoulder. Where is he? He's not going to come on and carve across his nose. He knows that that was his error, and so he comes back on behind Andy Prio. That's what you get when you are racing long-term professionals in cars like these. You get that ups, absolute trust on the limit. So, 179, John Spears leads. Uh, I beg your pardon, is in the car now, to the pit lane. It is Andy Prio that leads, Steve Soper in second, and they come in at the last minute. There is a minute and 50-odd seconds left, but it takes them longer than that to get around the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. So they're in, and that means that our early race leader, Sam Tordoff, charging around. Well, is he behind Mike Whitaker because of that long extra stop? We're going to have to wait for another lap for the timing and scoring to fully sort itself out. But we'll look at Tordoff and then at Callum Lockie. Yes, I had factored in the fact that uh, Mike Whitaker didn't have any pit stop penalty for being an elite driver, so mm, yes, that uh, does give him a bit of an advantage. But it is only a bit of an advantage. Yeah, it's not much as the number seven car, Steve Soper, gets out, Henry Mann gets in. There's Andy Prio, the Guernsey colours on his helmet. He's a proud donkey. Apparently that's a, a matter of pride rather than an insult. Guernsey donkeys, they like to dig their heels in. And so here is uh, the man who should be our race leader, Mike Whitaker. So where is he? He's swinging in to Stowe. And behind him, Sam Tordoff comes out of the Beckett's S's. So I'm looking 
looking at our other camera shots, trying to pick out where uh, the 179 of John Spears is. Here he is. So we've got 10 seconds, maybe, first to second, another 10 or so, second to third. Six seconds between Whitaker and Tordoff. OK, not as much as that, then. So Tordoff. 228.6, Whitaker 229.5 on the last lap. 10 seconds, coming down at a second a lap, 15 minutes remaining, not enough laps. He's going to have to close the gap faster, Sam Tordov. Out back onto the track again is the yellow Mustang, started by uh, Andy Prio, now in the hands of Alex Taylor. We'll start now to see, and there's uh -huh. the uh, that, there's the Kalamaki car, started by Julian Thomas. So that's actually behind the Prio Taylor car. Now, was box. it behind? No, he got he got by Prio and Sopa Hadley. There's there's the car that was started by Sopa. There's the car that was started by Prio. So that car had gone back. So it has uh, dropped back because of those pit stops. There is the new race leader putting a lap on the Mercury Comet Cyclone, or Mercury Cyclone Comet. So Mike Whitaker leading in the Mustang in the background, those headlights, that was Sam Tordoff, wasn't it? I think actually John Spears is leading. Is he? Yeah, OK. Because he's ahead <laughs> on our timing screens. I'm only guessing this because uh, he's eight seconds up the road, but uh, he he's on the same cycle as uh, Mike Whitaker, and he's ahead on the timing screen, whereas the other two cars are on a different cycle of pit stops. That's the Taylor and Mann cars. And we'll see when they come back round again. Yeah. But uh, I think we may find that this is in the lead, the blue pastel blue car started by Nigel Greensill. John Spears very nearly just won the front-engined Grand Prix race, spinning on lap one, not his finest moment, he admitted, and he came back to lead onto the last lap and was only just pipped at the post in his Maserati 250F. So, could he make up for it here? It's a great opening stint by Nigel Greensill, really taking the race to the long-term leader, Sam Tordoff. Yeah, confirmed now by the timing screens that Spears is in the lead from Whitaker by 4.6, so Whitaker is catching at a pace. Yeah, white car, number 49, is Whitaker back behind with the headlights ablaze, third place, Sam Tordoff. Now, he comes out, there he is. He goes by the Mercury Comet and Tordoff, almost two-wheeling. Jim Clark, Lotus Cortina start, the inside front wheel almost off the ground. He's really pitching the car around. He's not the only one, but good little battle here as well. This is Taylor versus Locking. Callum Locking not able to get by yet. Oh, he's uh, struggling to uh, keep up the pace of the yellow Mustang, started by three-time World Touring Car Champion Chow and the Prio, uh, now in the hands of Alex Taylor, but uh, into the loop they go and they are currently sitting in 5th and 6th places. Yeah, the Steve Soper Allen Mann car in 4th place. Here it comes towards us, that pale blue car. So, so, uh, Allen Mann, Henry Mann. Seems strange to say Henry Mann without red and gold of Allen Mann racing. And here comes Lockie down the inside, telegraphs to move early, commits. And there's an awful lot of car there to try and cut back underneath when you're in the Mustang. That car, the Falcon just keeps going past and going past. It's long, like a long freight train. But then actually, you say that, you look at the Mustang, it's not many inches shorter, is it? No, they're about the same size, aren't they? And uh, the, the Mustang perhaps looks a bit more squat than the the Falcon. I think it's the long side yes. elevation of the Falcon that makes it look longer, but when you actually see them in profile, oh, big smoking moment there, getting the car turned in. Callum Lockie under pressure. Going up towards the wonderful sweepers through Maggots first of all, and then right into Beckett's left and right again, and he's just drifting the car beautifully through turning now through the left and then the right, and the yellow Mustang, Alex Taylor, 
just behind, both on opposite lock, no understeer there as they turn through the Beckett's S's and a, a quick shot on our live stream there of the car ahead of them, which is uh, the uh, Henry Mann car. Yeah, and he's right on the tail of Mike Whitaker. Uh, Beg oh, hang a minute, no, that's changed the lead. Mike change. Whitaker ahead of John Spears. So, wrong pale blue Mustang. So 179, slightly less pale and, and uh, less metallic. And so Mike Whitaker has taken the lead from John Spears. Sam Tordoff still third and closing. Tordoff was six seconds quicker than Spears and five seconds quicker than, quicker than Whitaker on that last lap and is four seconds behind, or was four seconds behind. So Sam Tordoff will join battle inside the final 10 minutes. Mike Whitaker, the new race leader in the white Mustang, and pale blue 179, John Spears in second. The puce and green, uh, puce and yellow rather, uh, Falcon of Sam Tordoff in third place and closing fast. Then Callum Lockie in fifth, head of Alex Taylor's yellow Mustang, with Henry Mann on his own in the blue number seven Mustang in fourth place. Not sure what tyre the lead two have got left. Not sure what amount of tyre on the rear, particularly of the car Sam Tordov's got left, but he is certainly dialing in the opposite lock. And so Chris Hoy in the Alex Brundle started number 41. That's now running in 12th place with Sir Chris at the wheel. Just thinking of the colours on uh, Sam Tordov's car. I wonder whether he found some spare paint in the workshop because it's not a colour that you perhaps would normally associate with a, a Falcon. It's a kind of groovy late 60s, early 70s hippie catalogue colour, isn't it? <laughs> it was probably groovy grape or something on the uh, on the options list. Our new race leader, Mike Whitaker, just starting to put a little bit of space between himself and the uh, Spears and Tordoff battle, which is now being resolved in favour of Sam Tordoff. He came steaming out of the Beckett's S's and the chapel curve onto the hangar straight right behind John Spears, and the steaming didn't abate until he'd gone by and into Stowe. He's up to second place. Sam Tordoff has eight minutes to win this. His last lap, 229.6. Mike Whitaker's last lap, 230.6. This is going to be close, very close. And he's not going to be setting 229.6s stuck behind a slower car. Not that it's the slower car's fault, I hasten to add, but uh, he's uh, compromised there on his line through club corner. GT350 there in the colours of the GT500H rental uh, Mustang that hurts uh, very briefly offered in the US market before it became very evident that a lot of them being rented for the weekend had a rail roll cage welded in and gone racing or drag racing and then had the world roll cage ground out before the car was returned. So uh, that was uh, the familiar green and gold. And here again, I think this is still our lead Cortina. This is the Neil Shedden car. Yes, it is. So Henry Neal and Gordon Shedden, car number 52, it's been the lead Cortina all the way through, pretty much since Richard Dutton had his early race spin, and those guys are still having a fantastic run. But they're, uh, ahead of them is the 113 Andy Wolf, Ben Tinkler, and also oh, right, okay. so that's uh, their, the... Gardner and Keane are also ahead of them in Cortinas. So oh, okay. Not all quite right. up there, but uh, certainly in third place, doing a good job. That means Steve Neal gets a podium anyway. Oh, and off the road goes the uh, John Spears Mustang. Uh, just bounced across the gravel briefly there. Uh, that will have lost him some time. And the 52 Cortina, is that for position? Oh, and that's Whitaker out. So the race lead has changed. Sam Tordoff will have gone through. And Tordoff up to second, Spears third, Mike Whitaker bangs his head on the steering wheel. And you can understand why. Six minutes to go, a battle for the lead raging, and the car goes off in smoke. And there is the smoke. Something is let go underneath. And that is a lot of oil. Is that transmission? That's, that's diff oil, isn't it? Yeah. Coming out of the diff onto the back wheels. So uh, that, that would have put oil onto the track, unless he was already off the track when it actually went. Yeah. Well, there, 
there was a lot of smoke. I think he was going off uh, probably before much of the oil leaked onto the track. But that's a real shame. So Mike Whitaker on the side of the road at Cox Corner. There'll be stationary yellows there until the end of the race. Sam Tordoff leads as he did before the pit stops in the pole sitting Falcon. And uh, we've had a spinner at, uh, no, that's, I was going to say, is that the same corner as where Mike Whitaker is? But it's not, it's uh, actually at Woodcock Corner. Uh, John Spears in second place, about the length of safety car, yeah, uh, about the length of straight behind safety car is out. And that may be effectively the end of the race. So, Sam Tordoff leading, John Spears second, and... Henry Mann driven car started by Steve Soper up to third place. Callum Lockie in fourth, Alex Taylor in fifth. In sixth place is car number nine, that's the Mustang of Craig Davis. I think uh, we're going to see now. Ooh, that's the Mini going off on Diffoil. You can see the silvery trail. Whoa! And that's why the safety car is out. Goodness me, that was a heart-in-the-mouth moment there for Ian Curley. Luckily, he's got a lot of experience in handling minis, and he just had enough wherewithal to miss the stationary Mustang. Otherwise, that could have been really quite a nasty one. So Ian Curley off through the gravel. I think he did actually escape out the other side, but the safety car is out and that i think will bring the race to its conclusion so sam tordoff hadn't quite made the pass for the lead that seemed inevitable didn't it because he was closing so fast and then with that diff letting go and laying oil down i'm afraid mike mike whittaker's car off the road into the gravel and uh, the track in no state to be raced on now so mike whittaker inadvertently bringing out the safety car. And Ian Curley did uh, get out of the gravel. Uh, we just had a shot on another camera of him going round, so uh, good news. He, uh, there he is. He got through OK with uh, white wall tyres now from the gravel. That was a full code brown moment for Ian Curley. I'm sure he's had a few in his long and illustrious racing career. Multiple mini racing champion Curley. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was not a nice moment, I think. Big understeer, understeering off wide, saw what the danger was, off the brakes, got some control of the car and just skirted around the outside of the uh, stationary Mustang. And a very, very obvious trail of oil there. Mm -hmm. uh, just going to the scene of the Mustang. And uh, that puts paid to what I think may have been a late pass by Callum Lockie on Henry Mann for third place because he was closing and it was five seconds when the safety car came out. So Callum going for a podium. He's just a, a couple of cars behind in the queue. That pale grew, pale grew, pale green Lotus Cortina between them. And there is car number seven. Callum Lockie behind in 192 and just behind him, Alex Taylor. So they will be the top five. That, too, is motorsport. So, safety car is out, and uh, just under two minutes left. I mean, once uh, the safety car came out with, within the final five minutes, there was no chance whatsoever that we would go green again with oil down there. And, um, and the Mustang still in a very evidently dangerous position, stuck in the gravel. There's, there's no way of avoiding the fact that that car is just waiting to be hit if somebody else goes off. Even if you clean up the oil, you can't continue racing at pace with a car so close and in such a... A, uh, an evidently dangerous position for everybody else. So race organisers, the uh, clerk of the course, race director, left with no option but to scramble the safety car immediately. And yeah, there is the oil, the transmission letting go and just gushing underneath the car. So that has just blown a big hole in the diff. That's more than a diff plug. That's that. That is the whole rear end just exploding there under Mike Whitaker.
pitching him off into the gravel. And moments later, Ian Curley, the first man to find that trail of fluid in his mini. And he had a big heart in the mouth moment, missing the stationary Mustang. So time runs out for the Asian Flux Trophy, transatlantic pre-66 touring cars. And the big car of Sam Tordoff will be the one that takes victory here. The uh, safety car queue has just gone par past the start finish line once more. So they will roll back there and then take the chequered flag. But it will be uh, under safety car conditions. Nigel Greensill, John Spears, Mustang in second place, car number 179, the pale blue Mustang, third in the queue there. And then the final podium spot will be going to the next pale blue Mustang, car number seven, started by Steve Soper and the race finished by Henry Mann, car built by Soper. And that car now with podium finishing heritage at the Silverstone Festival. And add uh, another percentage to its uh, possible sale sticker price. Mercury Cyclone not uh, really extending itself too much at the moment, but with a relatively new driver in the lineup, perhaps that's not to be uh, too much of a surprise. So outside the top three, Julian Thomas Callum Lockie fourth, car number 192, the big dark blue Falcon with the uh, white V across the bonnet. And then the Prio and Taylor, yellow and black Bumblebee Mustang in fifth place. And in sixth place is the number nine Mustang. And that is the car driven by Craig Davis, the red and gold Alan Mann racing liveried Mustang. And looking a little bit, uh, just a little bit further down uh, in eighth place overall, that I think is our winning Cortina, car number 57, which is the, the white car with the, the purple stripe down the side. Uh, and that was started by Mike Gardner and uh, Phil Keane jumped aboard. Yeah, so he is the best of Cortinas. Second is the Neil and Shedden Cortina in class THC. And third is the Balf and Ashton machine. So a podium finish for Henry Neil and Gordon Shedden and the ashes of the late Steve Neil, Henry's granddad, Matt Neil's dad, in, as Matt told us, in the ballast box of the Cortina. Steve Neil resisted all temptation by Matt to come historic racing and now that it's out of his hands he's come historic racing anyway so uh, a nice little salute from the family to the late Steve Neal thoughts also with friends and family of the recently departed Neil Brown who with long-term friend and partner in crime Richard Dutton returned to historic racing after a number of years away from the steering wheel. Lost Neil Brown just a few days ago and uh, lots of thoughts from many people in the field with him. One of the uh, standout engine builders in motor racing. Sam Tordoff then claims victory. It always looked set to be and so it is. He claims victory, the man that started on pole position. Nigel Greensill, John Spears take second in their Mustang and Steve Soper, Henry Mann will be third in their Mustang. Tordoff's Falcon. I would like to know what the catalogue name for that colour is because uh, if that is a standard colour, it's possibly not one of the bigger selling ones on uh, any Ford of any era. So a great combination in the field from uh, the Tiddlers, the Austin and Morris Mini Cooper S's through the 1600cc class, a sea of Ford Cortinas with some uh, Alfa Romeos and BMWs raising their head as well, and the big bangers out front, the American V8s in the Ford Mustangs, the Galaxy, and in the Falcons. Lots and lots to whet the appetite in terms of sights and sounds of pre-66 touring cars. 
and uh, some great names in the field as well in terms of race driving. Sam Tordoff just waving to the marshals and the crowd. And again, while it's relatively quiet because they're not coming past at speed, just again say thank you on behalf of all the competitors and all the fans to the marshals, without whom there would be no motor racing. All unpaid volunteers, thank you everybody for all of your help and your assistance to the medical crews, the rescue crews and everybody else who makes motor racing happen. It's not just about the drivers and the teams, it is about everybody who keeps them safe, despite sometimes their best efforts to put themselves in jeopardy. Uh, the marshals try and make sure that everybody who arrives goes home nice and safely, and that is devoutly to be wished. So thank you to them, and congratulations as well to uh, Race Control for doing uh, a sterling job of keeping the program on time and running well despite the uh, intervention of the weather. Again, if you fancy getting a little closer to motor racing action than you can do in the grandstands or the spectator banks here at Silverstone, then all the UK Marshals clubs would love to hear you. They're always looking for new marshals to join. So you can look for the British Motor Racing Marshals Club or any other of our Marshals clubs online, and I'm sure they would be delighted to hear you. They're a, a fine bunch of men and women, younger and not quite so younger, some of them. But they get not only to have a great view of the racing, but also to participate in keeping it going. So the Marshalls clubs would love to hear from you. Well, this will give Nicola plenty of time to get her podium sorted out. Let's hope that we can hustle some of the drivers up and catch up with them as we will then look towards our next race. So again, as ever at the festival, combining all sorts of different categories of racing, we go from pre-66 touring cars to pre-66 Grand Prix cars. The age above the door remains the same, but the nature of the racing will be just as close, even though the machines are totally different. So uh, under two litre class, victory went to uh, car number 57, and that is the better of our Lotus, or best of our Lotus Cortinas, Mike Gardner and Phil Keane were the crew of that. Uh, second in the two litre car, under two litre class, is Henry Neal and Gordon Shedden. And third in class THC is car number 134, and that is Sean Balf. And late addition to the program, who was uh, Tom Ashton. So, Mike Whitaker, that's a, a dispiriting end to his day crunching back across the gravel at the end of the race. I've been there once and uh, it's not a great feeling, I have to say. So Sam Tordoff arrives in the collecting area. He is our race winner. <laughs> Last couple of work, laps were probably the hardest work of all because the adrenaline had gone and then uh, any tiredness and heat buildup starts to really feed in. Tordoff having to uh, undo that extra long pit stop because of his driving repertoire and the fact that he was on his own. John Spears takes off his helmet, chatting with uh, co-driver Nigel Greensill, another podium finish. And confirmation of our results. Sam Tordoff ahead of Nigel Greensill, John Spears, and then Steve Soper, Henry Mann. Uh, Julian Thomas, Callum Lockie, Andy Prio, Alex Taylor and Craig Davis rounding out the top half dozen. And not a non-Ford to be seen as the Gardner Keane Cortina won the up to 1600cc class. And Neil and Shedden in second place, Balf, Balf and Ashton in third. And the best of the minis for Bull and Brown in 17th place and in the dry and it was dry that is a fine effort from mini cooper s aaron smith the second of the minis and despite that big scare towards the end ian curley in third spot
So we started with 60 cars on the grid, and I think in the end, maybe three or four of them failed to make it through. The most dramatic of whom, Michael Whitaker, leading, but under pressure, inside the final five minutes. The transmission let go on his car, and that was the end of that, I'm afraid. The Alpha Sprint of the Hearts also not making it through. Didn't see what happened to them, but uh, they suffered a mechanical failure. Well, it was always going to be about the big American muscles once the track started to dry before the start of the Asian Flux Trophy. The transatlantic pre-66 touring cars were dominated by big output American muscles cars. Sam Tordoff led early on. Richard Dutton had a lurid moment after contact in the Beckett Sesses. That dropped him out of the lead group. His Cortina had been going extremely well early on. Steve Soper battling with Mike Whitaker, and then Whitaker coming out of the pit stops in front before a transmission failure five minutes from the end put him off and very nearly caused carnage behind. Flew it down at Cops Corner, meant the safety car was brought out, and so Sam Tordoff, who started out front, finished out front. A big moment for Ian Curley's Mini as he hit that slick, finally made it out to finish the race in 27th place with Greensill and Spears second, but Tordoff victorious.